but I mean really letting go into this hugeness, into this spaciousness, into this wonder, into this beauty. I mean, my God, the beauty that's in us, that we are, and just the beauty in a, in a snowflake. You know, in this, this world we live in, it's just so beautiful. You know, can we to step out of our mind and enjoy life? It takes a little bit of courage. It takes a little bit of courage to give up this I need life to be different because then I'll be happy. Because that's what we know. That's how we're wired. So the invitation takes some courage and it takes some trust. If I let go of my mind, if I let go of my mentality, if I let go of this habitual, whatever, egoic functioning, that I'll, I'll still be okay, I'll still be safe. You know, in a sense, it's like asking the controlling uh, mother-in-law, just get your hands out of everyone's business, just see if life will be okay. <laughs> oh my God, you'll be happier, woman, you know, please, you know. And when I talk about that woman, I'm talking about myself. <laughs> it's like when I'm speaking to you guys, I'm speaking to myself. And there's nothing that I say that I can't, can't learn from, of course. Because we all have the same mind, you know. We all have the same mind. We just have a little bit more of this or a little bit more of that just from our, our conditioning. I had this... Um, Extremely funny thing happened to me when I, uh, you know, started working as a as a therapist. I had this um, I had this thought or this belief in my mind, and it was about. Um, let's see if I can say this. Um, I'll get myself in trouble. It was it was about certain types of people, you know, and uh, I'll narrow it down a little bit, like convicted felons, you know who committed certain acts. I had this belief in me that these people are bad and they're wrong. They should be in jail and they should stay there forever. You know, and that was just kind of like my, my mindset. <coughs> and you know, whenever we hold a really uh, tight or tense uh, belief system in us, uh, not whenever, but often, God will come along or life will come along or whatever you want to call it, the universe, and they'll bring this person to you So God or life or whatever brought this person to me. And this person sat down in the chair across from me. And as I listened to them speak, you know, about this horrible, terrible crime that they committed, I just totally fell in love with the person. I saw their essence and their beauty it was just radiating out of them. You know, they just had tears just pouring down their eyes. And I was just laughing at myself. You know, for this thought that I had that this person too, that they weren't God is what my mind was trying to tell me. Of course, this person had done something that was really bad. I know I've done a lot of things that have been really bad. And caused others pain and suffering. And it would be really easy for me to judge them and say, they're bad, they're wrong, they belong in a box. But if we spend enough time in meditation, enough time with ourselves, enough, enough time in silence, and we really see our thoughts, thoughts that arise, and we'll realize that we have the same thoughts, you know, as the murderer, as the thief, as the, you know, killer, the whoever it is. I mean, normally all it takes is for someone to cut us off in traffic and we're ready to, <laughs> to run them into a ditch, you know? If they give a dirty look to one of our children, you know, we're ready to take off their head. 
So there's a real, it's uh, a word I'm looking for. Oh, I'll butcher one. Impersonability, is that a word? Of, of the nature of mind. Like it's not personal. Like our thoughts, you know, we take our thoughts to be ourself, to be who we are, but they're not. They just arise. Like we don't ask for them. When someone cuts me off and I, you know, have this vision of me running them off the road, it's not like I chose that thought. It just, it just arises. If we, if we did choose our thoughts, you know, wouldn't we all choose just beautiful thoughts of enlightenment and rainbows and unicorns? You know. But it just it just arises. So the same thoughts uh, that arise in the felon arise in me. You know, he just got caught. I mean, I probably did the same thing. They just didn't catch me. <laughs> maybe later, maybe later they'll catch me. But it's a really beautiful thing that, that happened. You know, God brought me this grace. It's, he just showed me this person as God. And of course, yeah, they did something really bad. But, you know, he was stepping forward. He was willing to own it and to work with it. And that was a beautiful thing. And so that's our, our invitation, is to realize our essence. We realize our beauty, our wonder, our spaciousness, our aliveness. And then from that place, from that hugeness, then we work on all these parts of our life that need to be worked on. What's well, a confusing thing in non-duality, non the teaching is that we are already perfect. And by that, the teaching is we, in our essence we're already perfect. But in our expression, we have a lot of work to do. And if we're honest, we'll really see that. Oh yes, I have a lot of work to do. There's a lot of behaviors that I need to correct and clean up and polish. But if we just do it from some egoic place, it'll only take us so far. And by that I mean if it's ego polishing ego, we only, we only go so far. And like in the world of psychology, will only take us so far. But if we're allowing the purification to take place from this hugeness, we may have uh, a better final product, if I can say that. We can be a final product. 